Hello and welcome to another Flight Gear tutorial. Today I want to show you the takeoff and landing procedure for the North American P-51 Mustang in Flight Gear. So I have been experimenting a little with different procedures, uh, with different flap settings and uh, elevator settings and stuff. And today I want to show you the procedure which uh, in the end turned out to be optimal, at least for me. So here we are uh, at the Bergen um, Airport in Norway on the, on the um, North Sea coast of, of Norway. So it's Echo November Bravo Romeo. Uh, I have paused the simulation. Let's get into the cockpit. So first of all, we close the canopy. By default, is it, it is open. So I press, press the Charlie key. You see that handle is turning and closing the canopy. Um, I have already started the engine. Uh, I don't want to bother you with the startup procedure. It is fairly easy. There is an auto start option here in the menu. And that is very straightforward. Today, it is mostly about the takeoff and landing. So I want to uh, point out some things that I figured out at least for my uh, takeoff procedure. The first thing is I use flaps for takeoff and not only flaps position one but I use flaps position three in order to lift the tail of the plane by itself. I don't want to force it by pitching forward but I just wait until the plane lifts off the tail and with flaps position three this I found is easier than with flaps position one. It stabilizes the plane earlier. So there are six flaps positions, flaps up and then one to five and now I go to position three. One, two, three. Out of five. So this is the first thing that I recommend, flaps position three. The second thing that I recommend is don't use uh, the the elevator to press down the the uh, tail of the plane onto the runway just i keep the the control stick in a neutral position so i unpause the simulation we're on wheel brakes now on, on parking brakes so i don't do this i don't pull back the stick like for example with other uh, planes during startup, like for example with the Messerschmitt 109, but I just keep the, the control stick in a neutral position. You can even take your hand off the stick during the, during the takeoff, and I absolutely recommend once you have touched down at landing that you just take your hand off the joystick. So that keeps you from doing some some uh, aileron movements and and um, elevator movements. I would completely do the touchdown without using the joystick at all, only using the rudder pedals. So that's the second thing. Keep the keep the control stick in a neutral position. Then, as you can see, the gear of the Mustang it has a very wide stance, so that helps a lot uh, stabilizing and that also makes the rudder of this plane very effective so you see the rudder it's quite large and it is effective even as long as the tail wheel is rolling on the ground this is totally unlike for example the Messerschmitt 109 where the where the rudder is totally useless once the once the tail uh, is down on the ground so i re third recommendation is use the rudder for lateral steering and not the wheel brakes. You can use the wheel brakes, but it's a very brutal maneuver when you press one of the two wheel brakes asymmetrically and it can make the plane nose over. So you have to fight along two axes. You have to, uh, you have to control the yaw movement and also uh, that the plane is pitching down. So I recommend to use the rudder also for taxi and not the wheel brakes and also for the takeoff use the rudder instead of the wheel brakes so now we are still on parking brakes i release the parking brake handle but that does not release the parking brakes itself you have to tap the brake pedals for once and then your plane will start rolling and then we start our our um, takeoff procedure so just once again for recap, flaps three, 
No elevator. No wheel brakes. Use the use the rudder for steering. Now I tap the wheel brakes. And we start rolling. And the fourth thing is that I recommend is don't open the throttle completely. Um, open it gradually and you're good to go for takeoff uh, when you have only applied half the throttle. So now we start. I keep the stick in a neutral position and gradually increase the throttle. Use the rudder. You have to be quite active with the rudder to keep the plane more or less centered. And now you see the tail is coming off the runway by itself. So you don't need to guess when it's time to lift the tail of the plane. The plane does it all by itself as long as you don't use the elevators. And now it's a little bit of zigzag, but it's nicely controllable. Use the rudder to keep the plane on track. With 150 knots, you're already good to go. This was something like around 180 knots. So I retract the gear and the flaps. We just make one quick go around here and then we go for the landing procedure. Let's have a look from outside. Gear and flaps are up. Let's not get too fast. We are now at around 200 knots. This plane is ha it has a very powerful engine. It can go very fast in level flight, more than 400 knots. So it has really a lot of power. But that also makes it hard as it has no air brakes. No speed brakes. Um, it makes it a little bit hard to reduce the speed so that you're ready for landing. You can just reduce the speed by pitching up, of course, and then uh, open the flaps completely, and then uh, then pitch down again. That would be uh, some kind of emergency procedure to uh, reduce the speed before landing. So we will fly underneath this bridge. Here at the Northern Sea. And then there is a little hill or mountain on the right side. We can use this for orientation. We fly around this mountain there. You see this little mountain. We aim for the mountain and then we turn right to return. So I will already go to idle throttle to reduce speed, um, not to damage the flaps when I when I open the flaps. I'm using the latest flight gear version, uh, 2018, and that uh, already generates some very nice light effects here in the uh, in the afternoon, and also with the landing lights and the airport lights. So it's a real improvement um, compared with the 2017 version of Flight Gear. So pitch up a little to reduce speed so that we can safely um, extend the flaps and also extend the gear. Now that was a little bit too fast for the gear, but okay, this is just a demonstration. It doesn't matter, the gear is not uh, damaged more flaps. We want to go to maximum flaps, flaps position 5, and now I will briefly explain my standard landing procedure with the P-51 Mustang. So I apply full flaps, landing speed is between 100, this is the speedometer, between 100 and 150 knots, that's the optimal um, touchdown speed. So full flaps, and I keep floating along the runway as long as possible. I pitch up the nose, so I, I will flare when I'm over the runway. And then I will be floating along the runway as long as I possibly can to make a smooth and gentle touchdown. Because this gear, it's a little bit jumpy, so you shouldn't touch down too hard. Otherwise, you will just be reflected from the, from the runway. You don't want to jump around like a kangaroo. So now we we will do a nosedive that accelerates the plane, but it's still okay. So and then you will see I will be floating along the runway until the plane does the touchdown by itself with the main gear. And after that I immediately take my hands off the 
of the um, control stick because I will control the planes only with the rudder pedals and in the end I will press the when the plane is slow enough I press the um, tail of the plane onto the runway the tail wheel and then I can apply full wheel brakes I don't use wheel brakes before that moment it's not necessary so we're floating and floating and still not touching the runway and this was the first touch of the runway so I just let the plane have its way and I use the rudder pedals for steering no no wheel brakes yet and once we're slow enough I wait until the plane pitches up by itself and now we can pitch up safely completely without taking off again and now you can apply full wheel brakes and that reduces the runway length that you need so this was our little touchdown procedure so I took my hand off the control stick once the main gear touched the runway so we retract the flaps okay and now we can even try to do some taxi to this beautifully modeled airport I recommend that you visit the Bergen airport in Norway so the airport designer did a tremendous job here the, the jetways are very nicely animated the whole airport is really beautifully modeled and must have been a lot of work and you can see just using the rudder and maybe a little bit of wheel brakes uh, makes this plane very easy to control that's the benefit of this wide stance main gear of the p51 it's really it's one of the easiest uh, planes one of the easiest world war ii warbirds to control in flight here the, the only plane that i found that is even easier is the mitsubishi zero so if you're a total beginner with those warbirds from world war ii i recommend that you start with the mitsubishi zero this, this is really the easiest plane of all of them but then i think already comes the the p51 mustang and if you're into those warbirds it's an absolute must to, to give the p51 a try uh, the files are more than 400 megabyte but i think it was absolutely worth the effort of the developers it's i think it's the most beautiful and most detailed uh, models among all the flight gear warbirds from world war ii it's very, all those details uh, this plane is really tremendous that must have been a tremendous amount of work so i activate the parking brakes tap the brake pedals now the brakes are enabled and we stop the engine let's zoom in okay where are those magnetos yeah open the canopy look how how beautiful all those details of this handle it's really it's really wonderfully modeled and just also have a look at this plane at all the details look at the writings on the propeller it is really beautifully it's just uh it's really uh, a joy just watching this plane and flying even more so so this was our little our little mustang p51 takeoff and landing tutorial for today i hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and see you again next time goodbye